Hey guys, it's Brian for GumballTech.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to overclock your MacBook Pro's video card. Um, I'm using the 15 inch mid 2009 MacBook Pro and it has the uh, it has the NVIDIA 9600 MGT with 256 megs of dedicated video memory and basically we're going to use a free program called MSI Afterburner to overclock the GPU a little bit and again it's a free program it's made by MSI they're well known when it comes to creating video cards and uh, other computer hardware and Afterburner also comes with MSI Combustor which is a cool little benchmarking tool and then um, basically, um, here's my MacBook Pro, it's over here, then I have it plugged into a 24-inch 1080p monitor um, through Mini DisplayPort to DVI. So, I'm going to come in a little bit closer, and if you're wondering why I'm using a external camera instead of using uh, screen recording software, that is basically because... Um, when I'm doing these tests, the the little tests, I don't want them to, I don't want the performance to be messed around with by my screen capture software. So I figured I could just use an external video camera. But anyway, um, I'm going to give you a direct download link to MSI Afterburner down below. But basically, you're going to download a little zip file, and it's about, and we're going to be doing this in Windows, by the way. So. If you're one of those anti-Windows Apple fanboys, then you're out of luck. So basically, you're going to download a 7 megabyte zip file, and then inside of the zip file, you have the setup files for Afterburner and Combustor. And extract those to your desktop, that's what these two files are. And basically, you just install Afterburner first, and then you install Combustor. You don't really need the Combustor program, but it's 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 really it's a really simple benchmarking tool, and you know it's simple and it, and it works. And it, you can really see the difference between your overclocking and your stock speeds with this program. So it's good to install this. And here are the little shortcuts to the programs after they're installed. And I also have a program called GPUZ, which lets you view more information about your uh, about the video card and your other system information and things like that. So I'm going to show you GPU-Z really quick. Um, the, the name comes from CPU-Z, which is it's an application similar to this, but CPU-Z is more towards uh, processors instead of video cards. So here you got. So here you can see that I am using the 9600 MGT. That's the name of the uh, video card. Uh, it was originally released in 2008. Um, the BIOS version is not here. I was going to do some BIOS hacking, but then I found out about MSI Afterburner, which is much easier to use. But anyway, it just gives you some other information. It gives you your current clock speeds and your stock clock speeds. Um, so once I overclock a little bit, you'll see these numbers here. They're going to change a little bit. Then if you happen to have multiple video cards, you could choose that in the drop-down list if you're running a SLI or a Crossfire configuration. Now the MacBook Pro does have two video cards, but the 9400 is actually integrated and it technically it just doesn't count. So I'm going to close one of these. Okay, so over on my actual MacBook Pro, I have my, well here we have the README for Afterburner, and then here we have my Windows Experience Index rating. Now this is after I overclocked. Uh, previously the graphics and the gaming graphics scores were at 6.4. Um, after overclocking they went up to 6.5. Um, using the Windows Experience Index isn't the really the best way to compare uh, speeds and things like that, but that's what uh, benchmarking tools like 3D Mark Vantage and MSI Combustor are for. So we're going to go over to MSI Afterburner, uh, should load up pretty quickly. And basically, this is what it looks like, it's just a simple, it, it has a simple slider interface so you could change your clock speeds and things like that. Down at the bottom you have an apply button so you could actually apply your changes, you could go back to your stock clock speeds. Then there are some settings, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And basically it just gives you some... Uh, uh, safety uh, safety check marks here it's pretty pretty self-explanatory really and then on the right side we have a little 
a slide out thing and it gives you some information on your current clock speeds, your GPU usage, temperatures which you should pay attention to, and things like that. Because MacBook Pros, like the video cards and processors in the MacBooks, they get hotter than normal laptops because there's just not enough room to put a bigger heat sink and fan in there. So temperatures are considerably higher than on a normal laptop. Um, I, I think that like there are some HP laptops with a 9600 MGT and they run about 20 degrees Celsius cooler than the ones in the MacBooks. So definitely the MacBooks are not very good when it comes to heat. Now at the top of Afterburner it tells you your actual graphics card and it tells you the driver version. Now I am using the latest version of the NVIDIA drivers, 260.63, which I believe was released on September 14th. These are the beta drivers and they work great. So these three sliders are the only thing we could change and you know this is what we're actually going to be playing with. So the stock speeds of my 9600 MGT is 500 megahertz for the core, 1250 for the shader, and 792 for the memory. Now of course if you bring this up a lot, your temperatures are going to go over the roof and your computer might crash and things might go crazy. So um, to me, a good place to start would sort of be in the 600 range. So you could just type in 600 on your keyboard and push enter. And then it automatically changes your shader clock to what the program thinks would be a good level for that. And then for the memory clock, we could try something like 825. Um, you don't really want to go higher than these speeds anyway because your temperatures will really go through the roof. So basically, once you've chosen your speeds, you could go ahead and click the apply button at the bottom. Now I'm going to go over to the GPU Z window and right when I click on apply, uh, it might take, okay, it just changed right there. So the overclock worked and the new clock speeds are working. Now I'm going to go and reset these really quick to go back to the stock speeds. And then we're going to go over to the MSI Combustor and we're going to do a little benchmark so we can see the before and after performance. So I, at, um, for default, the render the renderer is DirectX 9. So I changed that to 10. Um, using DirectX 11, it causes an error. So DirectX 10 is a good place to start. And then for run mode, you could go ahead and push benchmarking. And then if you'd like, you could just leave everything else the same. But when it comes to the time, I put it to 10 seconds instead of the default of 60. 10 seconds is, to me, that seems fine. So once you've chosen your settings, you could go ahead and click on start. And you'll get the little window. And it will do this little graphic here. You see that I'm getting about 32 frames per second. 31 or 32. And then here's some information on the little benchmark. Also give me my clock speed and such. So we're going to go ahead and go to our new clock speeds, but for the core I'm going to go ahead and give that 625. And then for the memory I'll bring it up to 825. And then click on apply. And then these should change. Yeah, they already did. So Remember that the first time before or at the stock speeds, um, the frame rate was about 32. So with the same benchmark settings, I'm going to go ahead and start that. And this time we're getting 38. 37, 38 before we got 31, 32. It hit 39 for a second. So basically, you can see that the overclock did help a little bit. Um, so, you know, but when it comes down to temperatures, that's the most important thing to pay attention to. Um, I did notice that using stock speeds, I get about, uh, it goes up to about 93 degrees Celsius when I'm using my overclocked speeds. Uh, you know, after about 45 seconds of doing something, it'll go up to about 100 degrees Celsius, which to most people is insanely high. That's, that's really hot. Um, if you go over that a little bit, your computer will probably turn itself off. But I guess I guess it's okay because usually when I'm playing a game or doing some video stuff where my GPU is being used a lot, um, you know, the temperatures probably get into the 95 degrees Celsius range. And I've been doing that for about a year since I've owned my MacBook Pro and everything seems fine. So I'm going to go ahead and bump these speeds up all the way 
just as a little experiment. And you can see that my clock speeds just changed. This is as high as they can get. Or they're, this is the highest that the sliders will let us go. So that's on. So remember that with the stock speeds, we got about um, 31 to 32 frames per second. Using our overclocked speeds, we got um, about 37 to 38. So let's see what we get this time with all the sliders as high as possible. So you can see that we're getting about 40 frames per second, 41. So you can see that overclocking it as high as uh, afterburner will let us, it definitely helps a little bit. A more practical situation would be in a video game. Um, I don't really have the time to do that. But, you know, every game I, I, I really play it plays fine already. Um, let me bring over my games folder so you can see what I got. And basically, all these games play fine. The only game that has any sort of problem is sort of with Test Drive Unlimited 2, which I'm not supposed to be talking about because it's I'm under NDA for the beta. But anyway, um, you know, I get about 40 frames per second, and that's at the absolute lowest settings, which actually looks good for the game. But anyway, um, playing that at 1280 by 720 gives me about 40 frames per second. I'm sure if I overclock, I could get about 45. It's not that big of a difference, but my main concern is with the temperatures because they will go higher about by about 5 to 10 degrees when you are overclocking. So that's something that you really have to pay attention to should you decide to actually leave your card overclocked. So basically this is a quick video on how to overclock the graphics card in your MacBook Pro. Um, again, you just need to use MSI Afterburner, which is a really great program. A lot of people use this, um, and it, it seems to work fine. Now, if I was using a desktop GPU, you know, through PCI Express or something, I could probably change the fan speeds and maybe the core voltage levels. But anyway, that was again, that was a quick video on how to overclock your MacBook Pro's video card. And, you know, if... I mean, if, if you plan on actually leaving your computer overclocked, you'll probably want to get a cooling pad or maybe some dry ice to, or maybe turn your MacBook Pro into a crazy water-cooled uh, thing there. But anyway, again, you could use MSI Afterburner to overclock and Combustor to sort of benchmark your, uh, your changes. And, you know, temperatures are really important. You've got to pay attention to those. Because the MacBook Pro it already runs hotter than most laptops. So that's about it with the video. Leave any comments or questions down below. And if you like what you saw, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I got more computer hardware related videos coming up. So definitely be on the lookout for those. So you can go ahead and subscribe. And again, that's about it. So thanks for watching. And we'll see.